right terrifying um we, yeah we definitely don't allow parents to murder their their children um hey speaking of uh let's talk <laughs> are you that. seriously gonna go into the oh my goodness <laughs> i seth in liberty texas you're live with eric and b <laughs> <laughs> B's gonna kill me. Uh, I am. As, as I soon, am. Yeah, as soon it will as, be as, off as, air, but yes, yeah, this is gonna happen. As soon as the coronavirus thing breaks, I'm done. Okay. Seth, can you hear us? Yes, I can. How are y'all? Doing well. What would you like to talk about today? All right. So basically, I uh I saw an episode of Talk Heathen previously where you explained your stance on uh, abortion which is um the uh, the bodily autonomy argument right mm -hmm. uh, yes and so i'm not against, i'm not against abortion personally but um so i was trying to explain the argument to someone else and by doing that i looked it up and i saw a counter argument to that argument which is basically oh. that while while that's true that um that you can withhold your body from another person because you don't have a right to save them. You also don't normally like cut that person up and then like dispose of them. And I, I just wanted to see what your response to that was. Well, um, I guess my first question would be what, well, there's several questions, several lines of questioning there. I could ask what stage of gestation are we talking about? Because the implications yeah. morally are very different depending on whether it's three months or eight months or anywhere along those lines. Um, I would also say, are you, are you targeting the woman or the doctor in this situation or rather the person with the, uh, with the pregnancy? Um, because uh, the person who is pregnant isn't doing anything apart from yeah. uh, getting rid of the pregnancy. Yeah. So my, I guess I need a little more clarification. Yeah. Um, well, I was talking more generally. I didn't, I didn't think as far as to define a, a period of, um, of gestation, but I guess we could talk about it in the middle stages. Um, and I, and I actually did think, and I don't think that, doctors should be punished. I just don't know what the moral argument against that would be. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, first of all, the way, and this is me speaking as somebody who has never been pregnant, never intends to be pregnant, and also does not know too, too much about, uh, you know, biology in, in that sense. Um, but uh, here's my, here's my breakdown real quick. If you are a fully formed person who has a history, who has passed mm -hmm. as, a, as an adult who is now pregnant or, you know, even, you know, forbid a child who is pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Um, to up to a certain point, I don't see any issue with personhood at all. Um, because there is what? not the actual body and brain and uh, chemistry and biology to support that theory, in my view. So let's go up to seven, eight months, uh, or however long. Um, and then it becomes a question of, okay, this person wanted this pregnancy more, more likely than not, um, because they have kept it mm -hmm. for seven, eight months. And now it becomes a situation where probably it's a choice between who lives and who dies and who gets to continue right. existing. And in that case, it's a really <laughs> god awful, terrible, tragic thing to have to decide. And many, many people have had to make this really difficult choice and then be shamed for it. Um, so for me, the question is, okay, does the person who is going to die without this procedure have the right to make that call? And I think that they do. Now, D focusing on how an abortion happens feels a little bit like a um, like a red herring to me, honestly, because the point is not that you go in with the intention of, of cutting up and, and murdering a fetus, right? The intention is saving the other person's life. And unfortunately, there are there is an inability for a fetus to exist outside of the womb uh, before a certain point. If it was possible to exist outside the womb, then, you know, they would deliver it prematurely and she'd give it up for adoption or something like that. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, this, this Alrighty, is, well, 
I think this is probably a shock to no one. Uh, but I do not own a uterus and I'm going to right. listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to listen to those that do. So, right. Yeah. That makes uh, a lot of sense. The only reason I targeted Eric with, with the question is because I didn't, I, I, I haven't heard B make the argument. Does that make sense? For oh sure. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. I, I just, yeah. just w when it comes to situations like this, um, I, I can give you a, a similar example. Um, I just had to move to a new place. And in moving, I needed to right. talk to realtor people who could help me find this new place. Mm -hmm. And when I showed up with right. my roommate, uh, who's the Holy Kool-Aid, a white guy, um, I walked up and right. they thought I was the help. They thought that I was uh, someone mm -hmm. on the lawn because I'm Mexican. Um, right. And then they turned to my roommate and were like, hey, you're here to see the house. Um, when it comes to talking about that, I prefer the person who's affected by it to have the first yeah. chance, you know, listen to those people who are being affected by it. Um, in, instead of, yeah. yeah, when you can, that's important. So, you know, I would love for him to talk about that too. And for him to say, Hey, that sucked. But, you know, if, if we're both competing yeah. for, I, I would prefer to be the, you know, <laughs> so yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I think y'all pretty much answered my question, but I, I do have one other question if if you will allow it. Yeah, uh, go for it. Yeah, if, if, if it's quick or if you can summarize it quickly, just because we've got a ton of calls on the line, go for it. Yeah, so basically, um, I know that you play a lot of D&D. &D. I don't know if V plays D&D, &D, but I, I assume you're you're familiar with the term rules lawyering. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I'm sure you're going to pretty much hate me after this, but I'm, I'm pretty much a rules lawyer because I, mm -hmm. I, I just I like playing. Uh, I don't I, I don't want to explain it, but but basically I don't understand like in D&D, &D, you can go directly to the book. This is exactly what it says. And you can interpret it different ways, but this is exactly what the original book said. Right. I don't mm -hmm. understand how. Because with the Bible, it's been translated and taken out, and and there there is no copy. There's no rule. This is just an opinion, and so I don't understand how anyone can make an argument with the Bible if it's not even the Bible anymore. I, that makes sense. Yeah, it kind of goes in a couple different places, uh, but I think I'm picking up the thread. And I would say number one, when it comes to D and D in the Bible, you have two very different goals. Um, as someone who's DM'd games. Um, the important thing is that you're providing a good experience for your players. There are plenty of times that I have yeah. rolled in ways that would kill my players, but would not leave a satisfying story. And so that's the reason why yeah. we have a screen between us so that I can lie and say, you won. You know? <laughs> right. um, that said, the goal with the Bible is often, you know, a uh, believer coming out and saying, hey, this is a true factual thing and, and because of that the goal is just so different that i don't think that that it would really apply oh, okay all yeah. right but well thank y'all taking my call you all have a great day you too. yeah you too okay are, are, are you gonna kill me <laughs> not yet i'm gonna make you wait for it um 